All right, a good Tuesday to you. Thanks for logging on and checking in with the tropical update. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist John Dawson, and I just want to pause for a second and recognize that it's not Monday. Man, yesterday, I don't know though the rest of you felt, but it just hit me like a Monday, even more so than usual. It feels good to get into a Tuesday and just kind of feel like we're working our way through the week a little bit, and there's a bit to talk about when it comes to the tropical forecast. We're glad you're here. And just a reminder, if you're not a regular, we're here every day of hurricane season, including the weekends. And we'll be here a little bit after four o'clock central time, bringing you the latest on the tropics. And typically this time of the year, things slow down a little bit. We don't have as much to talk about, but not the case for today as we are expecting some pretty major developments in the western portions of the Caribbean. And this is one of those top opportunities or one of those systems that we're really confident that we're going to have something. But what that something is going to do or where it's going to go, the confidence drops off quite quickly once we start getting out a little bit extended in our forecast. But all the conditions are really ripe and ready to have a tropical system, most likely a tropical storm, perhaps even eventually a hurricane strength storm in the Western Caribbean and where it goes after it hangs around there for a little while is a bit of a concern just because when we don't really have a lot of confidence in what's going to happen, we get a little bit more uh, anxious, I think, about the situation. So let's sort of dive into things. I don't want to get us too worried at the moment, but I just want to make sure that we are giving this some attention because it certainly could end up making some impacts to land uh, in different countries. Uh, so let's get to it. First of all, the tropical wave right now has been identified from the National Hurricane Center as Invest 99L. So if you hear us talking about Invest 99L, that's that tropical wave that we've been watching for a while. Now just sort of getting a little bit south of Jamaica. It'll continue to move to the west in the next 24, I'm sorry, 48 hours. So in the next two days, the National Hurricane Center giving it a 60% chance of development, but in, a, in the next seven days, a 90% chance of development. So we could easily in two days have a named storm in the Western Caribbean. And the, the situation is that there's not so, any strong steering currents. They're going to keep pushing it a certain direction. It's going to kind of loiter or kind of hang out and then we kind of have to watch and see how things develop in a bigger picture and kind of see where things are going. So 99 L is currently what we're identifying this system as how we'll be referring to it. It allows the National Hurricane Center to crank up all the computer modeling and see what we've got as far as those expectations. Eventually, though, this is going to become Sarah. So be ready for Sarah to be that next name that we're going to be talking about, and that's going to be most likely that same system that we're looking at. So there's the low pressure or the tropical wave just to the south of Jamaica. And we've seen that sort of getting itself organized over the next 24 or over the last 12 to 24 hours. We've been even seeing the, the, the beginnings of it even further than that. And I want to talk about a couple of the things that are helping it and hurting it as far as its development goes. First of all, the warm waters. It's there for sure. We've got mid 80s over much of this area that it's going to be working with. And so we're for sure going to be able to see that helping this system to develop. Wind shear, those upper level winds that when they're strong, sort of deter a development happening. Well, they're light, so they're not strong. So that's going to help promote that organization that the system needs to really grab a hold of this fuel. That's the warm waters and really begin to get that trend, that transformation into a tropical cyclone. Now something that's going to be kind of fighting it a little bit and the high pressure ridge hasn't really built in completely yet. Um, this is sort of the situation where we find ourselves right now across the Gulf of Mexico. We're expecting a a really a high pressure ridge to kind of get into place as we get to the end of the week. That's what's going to be kind of just keeping this system parked down to the south in the Caribbean, kind of preventing it from uh, slipping up and into the, the Gulf of Mexico, at least in the short term. And also notice this drier air, though. That's on the negative side of things as for its development. What we saw, if you'll remember with Raphael, is once that system got into the Gulf, it ran into a bunch of dry air and that 
sort of helped tear it apart along with the upper level winds. Well, those things are not there right now. The, the drier air and the damaging upper level winds not happening right now or even for most of this week. If the system were to try to begin to work its way even further to the north later in time, those should be built back into place. And that's going to be good news for, for folks like us here in the Houston area. We feel that that high pressure and that dry air will, will protect us from seeing a tropical system. So much of the Gulf Coast is not going to be concerned with a landfall here in the U.S. I can't say that completely for the state of Florida, though. There are some indications that this system might get pulled to the north, but end up tracking even more to the northeast close enough that there could be impacts. Now, I don't have enough confidence to really be saying get ready, Florida or anything like that. But I do have enough confidence to say if you're in Florida, you need to be paying attention. We don't check out the hurricane season is not over yet. Let's watch and see what Sarah ends up doing as far as its development goes. We're really just beginning to get those computer models up and running a little bit. So you can see this general idea of what's going to happen with just a couple of them that are, are uh, posted here on my map. They're going to continue to see that westerly track and then it's going to get where it wants to start making a landfall, wants to start interacting with Central America, but then going to kind of get sort of pushed back around, maybe even circle around a little bit more and not make a landfall. The longer it's out over the water, the more opportunity it has to strengthen and organize and then eventually have even longer impacts on those land masses that are near it. So the entire Western Caribbean, uh, as well, of course, as Cuba, Jamaica, everybody kind of needs to watch and see what happens with Sarah. Central America, uh, Honduras, uh, Belize, uh, other areas further to the south, definitely going to be seeing quite a bit of rainfall in portions of Central America. Here's the GFS model. I'm just going to pick one model to show you. I think it gives a, a clear idea of some of the certainties and uncertainties that all of the models are having. Many of them are have a track that's similar to what I'm going to show you here. So first of all, we kind of see the beginning of that organization uh, that's taking place just south of Jamaica. As we run through time, we're tracking it, we're tracking it, and we get into the end of the week. We're pausing here on Thursday. Organized, probably a tropical system at this point. But then watch what happens as it as it just sort of wanders around here just a little bit. It's it's not really going anywhere. We're continuing for two more days and it really didn't travel very far at all. It just kind of did a little circle, a little swirl there as it moved around and it got bigger and more organized overall. None of that is positive. None of that's really what we want. That could continue to make those impacts on Central America. Or as we get even further past next weekend, that's when this could begin to try to take a little bit more of that track to the north that I was talking about. So still some of our, our some of our expectations here has high confidence, like it's going to be a named storm and it's going to bring some rain to Central America. But then at the, the end of things, there's a lot of options, a lot of possibilities, and those confidence levels are a little bit lower for sure. Hey, just a reminder, if you're not watching me on Fox Local, you should think about it. There's a lot of information besides just the tropical updates, but all these tropical updates are are going to be easily found on Fox Local as well as YouTube and Fox26Houston.com. But Fox Local is a great place where you can also catch up on our other tropical related discussions like Mondays with Mike and for sure my hurricane gear test where we're talking about staying prepared and keeping up with the tropics. We also, of course, have lots of local things for us here in the Houston area, and I want to transition and talk about the improvements, at least in my mind, the improvements of what we'll be seeing here as we get into the rest of the week, because I would like it to feel a little bit more like fall and the temperatures to represent November just a little bit more, but pretty good afternoon out there for sure. Did you get out this morning? Did you feel that drier air that was in place? I think we'll do that again for Wednesday morning, maybe just a little bit more humidity overall. And yes, the fog is another possibility, but when we get to the afternoon, we'll warm up a little bit more. It'll become a little breezier than this afternoon. That's right before this front moves through later in the day. 
we'll have some rain possibilities, but not stormy weather expected, but certainly be ready. There could be a brief shower that kind of finds its way through. And yes, I've been showing you the reminder on the big countdown 16 days to Thanksgiving. And I know for some of you who celebrate Black Friday, be ready. That, of course, is just one more day after Thanksgiving. And then officially, astronomically speaking, at least winter starts in about 39 days. And of course, Christmas 43 days away till the near end of the year, and then we're just about done with 2024. Here's what the next seven days looks like, though. We've got a 20% chance of rain overall when we see that front move through tomorrow. The best days that we're going to have in the seven day are really going to be Thursday and Friday. I think most of us would agree with that. Plenty of sunshine, cooler temperatures back into the 70s, and we'll have some mornings in the 50s. I think we'll be able to get into the 50s still on Saturday morning, but our transition certainly starts. We're getting back close to 80 degrees. By the time we end the weekend, we are back at 80 degrees or more. You'll feel the humidity levels increasing and then our seven day forecast stops right before the next front. The next front should be stronger, having more impacts. It'll bring us colder air for longer and even colder air overall. I think we'll probably have most of us in the 40s by the time we get to the end of next week. So just giving you something to look forward to. Uh, in the meantime, though, get ready. We will be able to enjoy the lesser impacts of this front as they move on through starting tomorrow and then wrapping up uh, the end of the week on Thursday and Friday. All right, that's going to do it for right now for me here on this Fox 26 update. Of course, however you're watching right now, we'll be back at 5 p.m. with our full newscast.